how to speak and what to say. I was a young boy who was doing puppet shows, interested in cinema, and I wanted to study filmmaking. So I went to London. That was the period of the swing in London. The island had started to wake up and realize that uh, cannot continue as an island. British artists as well had started to question their heritage in music, in theater, in arts, and it was always a small minority which was doing the experiments. I was very curious. When I arrived to London for a year, I had to have a chaperone I, because by law, till you are 21, you were not considered an adult. So for a few months, um, that was more limited. But when I was 21, I started going around by myself and choosing my way and deciding what to see and what not to see. There, I saw the reactions and the reactions of the Lord Chamberlain, how plays were censored, how Royal Court had to be turned into a club to show an author's uh, work, etc., etc. Royal Shakespeare Company wanted to open its doors towards France. The new literature was heavily criticized, and its directors had to work in a very difficult, uh, difficult situation. At that time, uh, Peter Brook started at Lambda a series of experiments questioning the work in the theater web, which was being done. I was one of the members who were visiting these experiments. There were not many people in the audience. The first night, perhaps about 60, 70. But from second night onwards, it was hardly 20, and sometimes even less. But it had such a great impact in the, Ameri uh, in the British theater that it still is remembered. And everything else which was happening uh, at that period is completely forgotten. So the reason I'm speaking about all this is that how the artists were working worldwide. Then I had a chance, quite by chance. Uh, I had made an animated film at the school. The film was sent to Oberhausen as a British entry. And then I was chosen by the school to attend to a students' conference where different students had come from different film schools. There, again, by quite by chance, I came to know that somebody by the name of Jerzy Krutowski existed and was working in a small town in Opol with a theater with 13 rows. That film was called A Cart Postal from Opol, made by a British student. In that film, Jerzy Grutowski was speaking about his work, his research, 
And that was the very first time that his name was heard outside of Poland. And it struck me, these two phenomena that completely closed working, posing questions, how the theater world can develop and can continue its life. So I cut short, I am back in Iran to make a feature film. From the very first step, I'm back in 66, from the very first step I take in Iran, both in my minority culture, Armenian, and my school upbringing, Persian, and my social life, trying to make a Persian film, I cannot take a step. The film I made for Armenians, the Armenians banned, saying that it's a disgrace for Armenians the way I presented their pilgrimage to one of the churches. I had made a documentary, a pure documentary. <laughs> it hurt them. I had made the documentary as a gift. They didn't accept that. I started making the, the feature film, my cameraman stole the script and made his own version. I couldn't do anything. <laughs> that was the reality. There was no copyright in Iran. Nobody was defending anything. The film industry was a wild jungle. I couldn't do it. I had a friend who knew my work before I went to London. I, I just had happened that I had done some designs for uh, theater. Hoja uh, we were talking about what was happening in London and what had I, I had seen and what were my impressions. So she invited me to participate. Already the first festival had happened where Ranama's Siavash in Persepolis was presented. In the first year, there were no uh, theater. First, Khoja Stekia thought of proposing a uh, Traverse Theater Group from Edinburgh. But then, after some discussion, oh, we were reflecting on the question. We thought that, well, Traverse was a British literature, new, new literature. In translation, it was not possible. And uh, Iranians seeing those plays won't have any sense for them. But what was necessary was the impulse. And the impulse of the new writing, new theater writing in Iran was almost a, a kind of cliche, uh, repeating uh, the for forms uh, of the Western type theater writing, either influenced by the uh, socialist realism, the Russian ones, or uh, some 19th century format. Uh, there were some attempts to use the folklore in the theater, but nothing substantial had, had happened. So the festival didn't present any Iranian <laughs> contemporary theater in the first year. For the second year, immediately after the first the festival decided to propose a contest, a playwriting contest. So it was announced both in the television and in the newspapers. And Khojastekia had invited a group of five people as a jury to select the plays. She was receiving the plays. The plays were being read collectively. Everybody was hearing it, not taking the plays to read separately. This is very important to hear plays, not to read in silence. When she, one day she came, the jury was made up of herself, Khojastekia, Feridut Rahnama, Manuchere Anwar, Davude Rashidi, Azimate Jandi, and myself. I was invited by and one day, I am 
telling this story because I think that touches the nerve of the question of the creativity and how Shiraz Arts Festival started an impulse. Something made it possible for my generation and my other friends who started to practice come into the field of creation. One day she came and said she has received a very strange play very interesting in language, impossible to stage it because it follows no rules and no address, only the name of the author. So the play was read, everybody was impressed, everybody said it's not stageable, it's very interesting, but it's not a good play because it's not possible to st be staged. I didn't agree. I said, no, it is possible to stage it. And quite by intuition, I had felt at that moment that I had found what I was looking for, something which was not rigid, was not completely already read, made, made a package. So we started reading other plays and quite by chance, somebody, Manucher Anwar's brother, who was working with young actors, had mentioned that the committee has received a play by somebody who hasn't, got, uh, who hasn't mentioned his address, and the actor had said, who is, what's the name? And he said, well, Abbas Nalvandian. I said, oh yes, I know, he was, he, he was with me at the school, I know who, who he is. He, he is selling newspapers at the, uh, Ferdosi Avenue. So they went and they met Abbas Nalvandian, who at that time was 21. He had left school, he was very well read, the Persian literature, and he had written the play already, it was already two years that he had written the play. He was 19 when he had written that play. The play had gone around with different directors had seen it, had gone to it, even to the Ministry of Culture directors, and everybody had rejected saying that it's not possible, you cannot produce this. So him, by reading the announcement at the paper about this playwriting contest, he had sent it, the play, to the television, because that's where the festival had announced uh, its office. And Kujaste was working there, and we were getting together at Feridun Ranema's office to read those plays. So he was asked to come and see us. He came, a very young boy, very reserved. He talked very little. Different people asked questions. Mostly it was Feridun Rahnema who was asking questions. And he was answering yes, no, etc. He said, have you seen a play before? He said, two. Which plays? So it is Ayubakula, Ayubikula. And the second one was Glass Managery by Williams, Tennessee Williams in Persian translation. But he said, I have heard a lot. Because in those days, uh, most of the plays were uh, transmitted uh, through radio. Very rarely uh, there were theater productions. So um, very few published plays as well, few translations. So he had heard the plays, lots of the world literature he had heard through the radio. So, that was a great gift, so he was not conditioned by image. 
Then Ranaman asked other questions, very interesting. Uh, he said he has read uh, Persian ancient literature. He said, do you know Abjad? He said, yes. Abjad is the uh, traditional like Kabbalah uh, uh, in uh, uh, Arabic tradition and uh, Persian literature that exists. Uh, he said he knows a little, he has studied it. And uh, Anwar asked, Manu Chair Anwar asked, why did you send this play? He said, for money. The only question I remember I asked was, when you wrote it, did you like it? He said, yes. That was it. And then he left. Our discussion started. Everybody said, he is interesting, etc. But we cannot consider him among the winners. So after a long discussion, for the first prize, a more conventional play was chosen. Nalbandian was the second one. And the third one was another play adapted from Persian literature based on a story by Gurgani, Visan Ramin. So these pl three plays were announced. But during the discussion, when everybody was saying, this play is not possible to stage, but we will give the prize only for his language. I said, there are a few young Iranian Persian actors who were working with the director who had died recently and they had stayed with that. Uh, a director had, they had asked me to work with them. I said, these actors are there to show you that this play is actable. I will do a one week rehearsal with them. Come and see it. So I did the rehearsal for a week. I asked Kojastekia and Feridun Rahnama to come to see the play, the re how it was. They asked me to continue. I did the second part. The play was done. They said the festival committee the main programming festival committee has got to come and see. So a date was fixed and they came. Farouk Ghaffari, Reza Hotbi, Dijan Safari. I didn't know any of them. I knew only Farouk Ghaffari because he knew my films, my, my school films. Karim uh, Mushtaidi, Manucher Anwar, everybody. Faride Gohari. Oh, oh. They came, they saw the rehearsal, they left. Not a single word. Even the, the Persian habit of Haste Nabashid, even that was not <laughs> pronounced. Everybody was shocked. We said, what has happened? The next day, Farouk Ghaffari called me on the phone and said, come to my office. I went to the office. He said, we have decided to present this play at the Shiraz Arts Festival. And in the meantime, quite by chance, outside the system, another play was being uh, rehearsed and performed outside the regular system, which was Bijam of its Shahre Ghesse. So quite by chance, these two plays had appeared for the second year of the festival while the festival had commissioned two directors to produce Iranian plays, which I'm not going to name them, but they, they refused to participate after hearing that this has been chosen. Uh, they were not canceled, but they refused to be with this new things that were six. Oh, when they knew that the play was unactable, and now suddenly the festival is saying this is actable. So the whole scandal started. There was a very strange communication between me and Nalbandian. He didn't speak much. Uh, I never asked him questions. 
I was following everything intuitively. And I go into these details because it might clarify a situation for a young, younger generation, what happened for us. Actors, directors, etc., etc., writer. Farouk Ghaffari in his office said that everything is okay in this play. We are not going to have a censor. Because in the play there were lots of references to uh, Pyramid Ahmad Abadi, which was reference to Mossadegh. There was a reference uh, to Marx, Lenin, uh, lots of uh, references. Uh, and then there was one phrase, uh, there was even a citation from Furu Farzad, Tana ke Mimanat. The play was very rich in language and he was using this um, um, kind of uh, uh, composite language of, uh, I said collage, but it was functional. It was not picked up. It had a real function. The only thing that Farouk Afari said was, uh, at, in those days, it was the Che Guevara was in big question. Uh, there was a sentence, viva, viva, Che Guevara. He said, w -w 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 that should be, <laughs> should be cut out. I said, well, I won't cut out. I mean, and that's the, the author, but I, I will solve it. So I didn't cut that phrase out. I, in the mise-en-scene, I solved it. So th there was this character of the soldier, was, he was going to cry. They were all dead characters. The characters, the main characters in the play were dead. They were in another life. So, and each one was looking for something, which in deep down in composition, it was like a quest, uh, like the Conference of the Birds, but they were uh, different characters now. Okay. By using the word Zamenhof, they were entering into a, a closed space and they were continuing their research and not getting anywhere. That phrase was solved in the mise en scene by the time he was crying, Viva, Viva, Che Guevara, there were drum rolls going. <laughs> So it was, he was saying it, but, but it was not heard. And then the, the drums were stopping, and then he was dropping. So it was more. It happened. Nothing, nothing was cut. The play was performed. Uh, but before getting it on stage, I was working on the design. One day, I didn't know what to do with the design. I'm very intuitive, I'm ne never working in the, from my mind. I follow up the, the sensibilities. I was doodling, and little daughter of my friend, it was in the film studio, Chaplin Film Studio, uh, Golestan's uh, cameraman uh, had started a, Abraham uh, Golestan's camera had started a, uh, studio for ma making uh, commercial films. Uh, not co commercial in terms of uh, short commercials for selling products. So I was helping them to for the animation technique because that was my specialty. The, at this little girl ran towards me and he showed me a black paper. Uh, I looked at it and said, what is it? He said, Horshi de Shab, night sun. I looked at it and he had drawn with black pencil a sun with rays on black paper. Uh, that was the source of my inspiration for the st stage. And the first rehearsal we had in Hafezier Stadium, 
it started at night, and the rehearsal finished by dawn when the sun came up. It was very strange. Suddenly, the nature was responding to what was there. That was my guideline in relation to the festival of Shiraz. That play won, won at that, those first two years of festival of Shiraz had prizes as well. So it won an extra prize uh, for the second year, both of us, Nalbandian and myself, for the production. Uh, already he had won for his writing. Then a big discussion happened between the jury members. Bijani Safari, who was a very great, important artist, a real visionary with his sensibility, a very important influence in the programming of the certain um, programs in the festival, he had a big discussion, which was reflected on the papers as well, that the festival shouldn't give prizes to, uh, for instance, foreign performers like a violinist, etc., because it doesn't make sense, but should give prize for the creation. And there was a big argument between him and Fredune uh, Hoveda. But at that festival, it was Christian Ferraz who received the main prize. And uh, the committee, the general committee of the festival decided to drop giving prizes from the second year onwards. So there were no prizes given after the second year and the third, fourth, fifth, till the end, the programming never received any prize during the final day of the uh, closing uh, ceremony. So in the process, what I'm trying to say that how the festival itself through what was happening was discovering its own uh, way how to appreciate or how to develop in what was happening in the, the country with the youth. Uh, till the fourth festival, there were not a single foreign European or American play programmed in festival. They were all Iranian. Starting with Charresse, uh, starting with Pajueshi, Jarfo Sotorgono, Dar Sangware Haye Dore Bisto Panjome Zamish Enasi, a modern, profound, and important research into the fossils of the 25th geological era. That was the title of Nalbandian's play. And Charresse, City of Tales by Bijane Bofi, which was very popular. It was touching uh, with its songs and with this, and it has a very interesting character, which was the elephant. Everybody was thinking that the, the elephant, I mean, other characters, other animals were thinking the, the elephant is uh, not very beautiful. The, it has got to be mani manipulated. So he was transformed to another animal. So he's, he had horns and then he, his nose was too big, so it was cut. So, so, he, he, so it was very interesting that transformation of happening, reflecting the, the mentality of the, uh, the others looking at something. Uh, then was the question of how to develop this. The music in Hafezia and the traditional Iranian music. <laughs> Do we have time? <laughs> had, a, had a pattern, usually performed cut. So the festival started to introduce the traditional pattern, which was very long. So the time element started to function more organically in the festival for the very first time. Opened the, the private performances 
which was generally Iranian art has been very in private and closed. That was how Iranian art had developed in every field. Uh, the collective expression was very difficult. Besides Tazia, which was uh, other form but limited, it was not uh, happening every day. And the other arts were always happening in the houses, in the closed form. The festival started to bring that up with larger public, larger public being present. And then, then there was this question that there is no point inviting theater groups that will give an example that can become source of imitation, like Comédie Française, like British National Theater, which they had another type of tradition. Bringing that kind of theater in Iran would be imitative, would create an imitative source. The best thing will be to bring those people who are questioning the theater in its life and are taking new steps. That's how the new theater movements started to come, like Krutovsky, like Peter Brook, like Wilson, like Open Theater, like Bread and Puppet. They were all marginal groups. What they were doing at that time, they were questioning the theater. They were considered a kind of fringe type theater. The American theater was not the Broadway theater. Before, in Iran, you, it was possible to see a Broadway production commit, completely imitated. Even the sets were imitated. I mean, in Tatre Tehran, it was. The, the Tea House of August Moon was complete replica of the Broadway production in the middle of Tehran. Uh, everything was copied. So that was not the point. So the festival opened this way and then started translating and putting in contact with the youth writings of the visionaries like Arto, who had written about Gamelan Bali and to make them concrete and tangible for the youth. For the third year festival, which was on the rhythm, they invited Gamblan Bali to perform in Persepolis. So by the time the fourth year, which was directed towards the theater and ritual as a question, something was prepared, both in performance, in published material, and Questions were in the air. So when Grutowski started to speak, Brooke hadn't started his theater research center yet. Brooke presented his films in that festival. Uh, Jean Rouge presented his film rushes on the African tribes and the Dogon rituals. Very inspiring. Iranian. Taghwai had made a film, a documentary film, on the Gulf, uh, Persian Gulf uh, ceremony of Tsar. So these questions started to appear, and the youth started to grow up in this atmosphere. Whatever was there, whatever was there, was being discovered step by step. I finish this talk now when the opening production of the fourth year was supposed to happen in Persepolis, we went to Persepolis because no theater had ever been presented there. Music had been, but no, no theater. Sitting in front of the ruins, I saw the sun going down, and it was so majestic. I was with Reza Otui, Bijan Safari. We had gone in the afternoon there, not to be in the very hot sun, to be able to choose a spot for the opening production, which was the, uh, 
the idea was to stage the Visan Ramin. The, the festival had commissioned me to, to direct that play. I, it was so beautiful, the sun going down. I turned to Reza Hochpia and said, uh, there's no point staging anything here. If the people come and just watch the sun going down, it's the greatest theater in the world. Uh, and said, oh, well, why don't you do it? So, oh, well, the festival starts at 8.30. Uh, the sun goes down at 6.30. We will, you've got to change your program. He said, we will do it. So that's how I timed the mise-en-scene with the sun going down and exactly at 8.30 when everything would, was in darkness and only the fire which was lit with the moment of the sun going down on, for the stage, that's how the play was presented. At 8.30, when usually the festival was starting, the play was finishing, and the lights, Saint Lumiere was coming up on the Persepolis. There was no performance for an hour and a half. The public, after the performance, were free to walk around, and then take the bus to go back to Hafezye to hear the music. They had seen the performance between five, uh, between 6.30 till 8.30. That started a new movement which continued this freedom of the expression and using the, the natural elements. In, in August, both parts by Bob Wilson, traveled the world wide. That was the main source was Shiraz. And the main source was that Reza Otvish gesture. Why don't you do it? Uh, they were great gifts. I cannot finish this uh, talk without going back to Alba, Abbas Nalbandian, whose other play I did four years later, Nagyahan, all at once, Hazai, Habibullah, et cetera. A very, very, very important play. Uh, all these plays exist. People can read it. Uh, all the music which is performed by the great composers or Iranian music exists. Some of programs which are taped, they are in archives. This is a time capsule and a real source of study for the new generation. If they go through this, they will discover many, many things, many things, uh, many important vital questions about the uh, development of the art from 20th century to the 21st, both in relation to Iran, its influence on the artists, on the international artists. Nobody speaks that directly and nowadays. It's not fashionable, so it's not spoken. And some prefer to hide that. Uh, I cannot finish this talk without going back to Nalbandian, which in his, that play, all at once, it's a story of a young teacher called Feridun, who is living in a house with his neighbors. And in the play is the day of Ashura. And there is this ceremony happening outside the house And in the midday, it's known that Imam Hussein is uh, 
at that moment in the play, the neighbors, thinking that this young man, which has a trunk, in the trunk has money, they kill him exactly at that moment. And by the time they open the trunk, they see that the trunk is full of books. And then there is this panic that they have killed an innocent. And another innocent by the name of Feridun is killed with another innocent, traditionally in terms of religion, being celebrated outside the walls. So there is at this moment that everybody is in a panic that suddenly this young teacher reappears. He's dead, but he reappears. They're so afraid that they open the ground, they take the bricks away, they open the ground, he lays down and they cover him. That was performed the first night in Shiraz in Bagad el Busha. When that happened, there was a dead silence and then the public suddenly got up and they almost, some of them even, walked over this actor who was Bijan Mufit, walked even o over him. Irving Wardell has written about this and saying that image he will never forget. It was written in Times. One thing, one thing, I reflect always that if one day this new generation who hasn't been to Shiraz finds an access to this heritage of the music performed there, the plays done there, all of that is possible at least nowadays to hear them, not to see all of it, but at least the music is possible to hear. And read the plays and the reflect on the content of what was happening there, what was being presented there, seeing what was the current, what was the impulse. And when the truth comes true, when the truth becomes obvious, I just only hope that they won't do the same action like the characters of that play, reburying it, reburying the truth, and showing it differently. Nalbandian killed himself in 1989. Thank you.